Hey everybody, it's Claire. Welcome back. We are documenting our organic backyard vegetable garden here in North Atlanta for you guys. And glad to have you. Um, it's raining today and so I thought that I would share with you something uh, that I discovered in my whole closet. Because that's of course where you always store your potatoes, right? You know, um, that's Saturday Night Live skit, Debbie Downer, where it's like, wah, wah. That's how I felt when I, I think I was getting the vacuum out, and this is where I had stored all of our potatoes from Wood Prairie Family Farm. And look, you guys, this is the worst. These are the Yukon Golds, but they've sprouted. And that made it clear that it's really time to get these into the ground. So it's raining right now. So that's not going to happen at this moment, but it'll happen today. So I thought I would just talk to you a little bit about the potatoes that we got and um, some other thoughts. I mean, look at this. Last year, <laughs> oh my God, this poor potato. First of all, I mean, this is ridiculous. And I don't know if you can see, it's wrinkly, it's soft, it's mushy. I, I don't know. I don't know that these will make it but we're gonna find out. So I pulled out my journal and I'm on a couple of Facebook gardening groups that I really, really enjoy. And I see sometimes beginners asking for like, is there a garden book or a journal book that you like? This is the one that I really like. And um, in the potato situation, it was very helpful. It's called a week by week vegetable gardeners handbook. And one of the things that I like about it is the way it's organized. You can fill in your frost dates. So you see that says like seven, nine to seven weeks before the average last frost. But then it gives you multiple spaces for multiple years. So when I discovered my potatoes were sprouting, I was like, golly, when did we get them in the ground last year? And it was awesome to go back to this book. And we got them in the ground last year, February 21st. 2021, planted asparagus, strawberries, potatoes, directly transplanted lettuce, cabbages, and leeks. That's where we were. And it is now middle of March. So we're definitely a few weeks behind where we were last year. Having said that, last year we got the potatoes in the ground. It then rained for multiple weeks, just like it has this year. And the potato stalks were kind of yellow and spotted with brown and we just weren't ever sure if they were diseased or had blight or you know what was going on and there is a piece of me that thinks we planted them a little bit too early it was just so wet so we got a pretty good potato harvest but we were always sort of thinking there might be something wrong with them so I'm going to now get them planted as soon as it can dry up and I can I can get some space out there and we'll see how they do this year so I'll put the link I'll put the I'm not a link but I'll put a title of this book in the description. We're not affiliated with them in any ways. It's just an actual book that we use. Um, Wood Prairie Family Farm. These are the organic seed potatoes. These are the Yukon Gold, which everybody heard of the Yukon Gold potato. But let me tell you some of the other kinds that we've gotten. Um, we have two blue kinds. So last year, Wood Prairie Family Farm, if you go on their website, has like a sampler box where you can get a whole big variety. And we, that's what we did last year. And we planted all of them. And then this year we decided we didn't need that many potatoes. So we would just kind of pick our favorites. So these are the ones that we landed. Now we're north of Atlanta zone 7B. So that might make a difference depending on where you are. But these are the Anirandak blues. And these are really cool. The skin is blue and the flesh is blue. And I think that's just kind of fun. As someone who likes to cook and is into food, it's just, you know, a fun thing to have. Now these are the huckleberry golds. These are actually blue flesh with a yellow, I mean blue skin with a yellow flesh. These were hands down probably one of my favorites. I really, really liked these. I mean I liked them both, but I really liked these. So I'm hoping that these do okay. And in fact, this huckleberry gold has not sprouted at all. Let's open it up and see what that looks like. Uh, I mean, what bothers, look, you guys, poor little potatoes. I cannot believe that I did this. I mean, timing is everything with gardening, right? So, 
I need, I need to get these into the ground. Potatoes are really easy to grow. I was just in Savannah with my friend Becca and she actually has a house in Maine that she's going to spend most of the year in this year. And I was telling her she should grow potatoes because you literally put them in the ground, cover them with dirt, and then they just grow. I mean, it's pretty easy, easy, easy. So if you're a beginner and you've never tried potatoes before, this might be something that you could do. It's low maintenance and you could feel successful with and they store well. You know, they go great with everything. You can fry them up, you can put them in soups, you can make potato salad. I mean, there's so many ways to use a potato. It's really a true staple type food. This was also my favorite, this dark red Norland. Now you can see they're really trying to grow. Um, these were like breakfast potatoes. You know, you just quarter them up. They're kind of like new potato size, or at least they were when we pulled them. And to be able to slice those up and fry them in some olive oil and butter. Oh, God. Uh, I'm such a bad plant mom. I mean, y'all. I don't even know. I don't know that I'm going to get this out. Okay. Can you see all that? <laughs> what a hot mess. I mean, these poor little potatoes have been trying to grow shoved in my hall closet with my vacuum and my steam cleaner. Ridiculous. Okay, two more. Corolla. These are Corollas. The label came off. Um, this is a German, here you go. It's a German potato. I really like these for potato salad. I mean, it's just, I don't know. This will be something we'll have to track on our garden adventures. And then the Russian banana fingerlings. And these are like those skinny, long ones. These were really flavorful too. So the other thing about growing potatoes, if you have kids or little people, or again, if you're just a beginner, is it's really fun to harvest a potato. Um, they, you put them in the ground, you just make sure the potatoes never see the light of day. You don't want the potatoes to ever see the sunlight because they will turn green and that's poisonous. So as long as you keep mounting the dirt up over them so that the potatoes don't see sunlight, you're fine. That's really all you have to do. But when it comes time to harvest them, and we have a video from last year, um, you just kind of gently dig around where you planted the potatoes and then they're just all over the place and so it's very very fun to harvest it's something that kids like to do if you're a beginning gardener it feels very satisfying to just discover all these potatoes and you can start harvesting them early um, so that you have like new potatoes or early potatoes baby potatoes or you can let them mature so you're not in a situation where once the crop is ready, everything has to come up all at one time and then you have to process and preserve everything. You can leave it in the ground and pick as you go, which I also think is really low maintenance, particularly for those of us that still have full-time jobs and other responsibilities. It's nice to be able to go out and grab, you know, 10 potatoes for breakfast and then leave everything else in the ground. So I will keep you posted. Thanks for watching and being here. We sure appreciate having you. And let us know what your experiences with potatoes have been or if you're going to try potatoes for the first time this year. We'd love to hear from you. Bye.